Bonjour l'Église, que la paix et la grâce du Seigneur soient avec vous. Encore une fois, bienvenue à la maison de Dieu, bienvenue à l'Église HMBC, Église missionnaire de Pembroke Road. Nous, depuis Miramar, pour nous venir à Servissa, côtoyer la CAO, pour nous inviter à adorer le Seigneur. Jeudi, c'est un autre gros jour spécial, c'est le jour côté de la fête, papa, yo, tout papa. Donc, nous avons dit bonne fête. Et les pères sont comme des piliers. Maman, yo, yo c'est mon empli de courage. Mais c'est tous les deux ensemble, mon Dieu, t'es mettez dans le jardin de terre. Une femme et un homme. Yo ne pas aller sans l'autre. C'est ça que fait dit papa, yo, bonne fête. Et nous espérons que dans la famille, il n'y a pas de mi-temps que mon Dieu t'a créé yo, pour yo yé. On salue toute l'église encore une fois, quand pile visage, nous pas ouais longtemps, qui était nous moins content ouais. Alors m'a imaginé, ça fait à peu près 3 4 mois depuis nous pas physiquement et m'a regardé qui joie qui gagne pour mon ouais visage. Yo. Et puis me penser, waouh, comment ça va y est Le n'a retrouvé nous avec ça yo qui était dévancé nous yo. Ça yo qui était allé avant nous yo. Le n'a retrouvé yo avec Jésus dans les lieux célestes. Qui belle joie ça va y être, bien aimé. Si ti moment nous passait de séparation, il capoter toute joie ça pour nous et ouais, nous. Ma, imaginez seulement comment ça va y être. Le ensemble nous va retrouver nous avec le Seigneur Jésus. Fait que nous comptons matin, nous prenons l'adorer le Seigneur. Fait qu'on compte en côtoyer la caille. Au vichon d'espérance, nous sommes capables. Mais pas quitter le moment ça passe pour ne pas rentrer dans l'adoration. On nous dit un mot de prière. Et nous allons adorer notre Seigneur. Notre Dieu, notre Père, nous voici encore une fois ce matin, Seigneur, en ta sainte présence. Nous sommes venus tels que nous sommes. Nous sommes venus pour toi. Seigneur, nous voulons te dire merci de ce que, encore une fois, tu nous as fait grâce. Nous ne sommes pas, Seigneur, parmi les, les plus, Seigneur Dieu, mériteux. Mais tu nous fais grâce. Merci parce que, Seigneur Dieu, ne conduit pas nous dans le lieu ça. Et merci parce que Seigneur Dieu, nous-mêmes tous, nous t'a chanté non. Nous-mêmes tous, nous t'a salmontié non. Seigneur, au moment ça, c'est pour vous. Maman, nous couvrir ces noms avec cet esprit. Soufflez, Seigneur Dieu, cet esprit dans le moment ça. Et que les chants que nous allons faire monter à toi soient des chants dignes de ton nom, Seigneur. Merci pour ton peuple réuni en ce matin. Merci pour ton église, Seigneur. Et merci de ce que tu nous as mis à part pour ta gloire. Sois Seigneur Dieu apaisé envers nous et reçois cette adoration. Au nom par les mérites de Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, lui qui vit qui règne au siècle des siècles. Amen. 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 Gloire à Dieu. Après inviter l'Église, on peut ensemble avec nous, nous allons adorer le Seigneur. Mes yeux ont vu la gloire de Jésus-Christ, mon Sauveur, qui remporta la victoire sur la croix pour le pécheur. Nous allons chanter avec entrain et encore une fois. Photo et la caille, chantez avec, on fait qu'on content de la présence de Dieu.
Oui, Seigneur, c'est pour cela que vie. Vie, nous sommes adoration pour vous. Recevoir ton bon parfum de bonne odeur. Au nom de Jésus. Amen. Est-ce qu'on peut acclamer le Seigneur, bien aimé Est-ce qu'on peut acclamer le roi des rois, le Seigneur des seigneurs Amen. Gloire à Dieu. Amen. Praise God Almighty. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters, frères et sœurs dans le Seigneur ici réunis. All of you that are gathered here at Sion and uh, through the various social media networks, wherever you might be, I bring you greetings from the staff of HMBC. We appreciate your being connected with us every Sunday at this hour. We thank you. Nous remercions nous pour support nous. We thank you for your support, your prayers. Priez nous you. Nous remercions infiniment. And also for your financial contributions. Without your financial contribution, it would be quite difficult uh, to uh, continue on with that ministry. As you know today, in the U.S., it is Father's Day. And our church, as we do every year, is going to set aside a brief moment during the service to honor the fathers of the church. Yes, our church has uh, the best fathers of the world, best, the best dads, and the children tell me about that. And the way we do this, each year we declare a father of the year, followed by a brief presentation. So, je dis encore, n'a pas gain pour nous déclarer le nouveau père de l'année. L'année dernière, nous avions eu Frère Fritz Morisseau, qui tout au cours de l'année te servi nous vraiment comme un bon papa. Et nous te Seigneur, merci pour ça. Now, the question is, who will be the new father of our church? In just a few seconds, uh, you guys will know. For some of you who are here for the first time, Just the same way Pastor Jabel feels, I feel very, very, very privileged to see you physically and uh, to see your face. It's so nice to see that. So that gives me hope. That gives us hope. Amen. One day we, we will be, we will see our brothers and sisters, even if we cannot see the entire face, but we will be happy. So if you are here for the first time since our it's very, very slow reopening, Please remember to continue as much as you can to wear your mask until the service is over. Also about your tithes or offering, there are two standing baskets, two stationary baskets, they are colored black. As you exit the door uh, uh, um, at the end of the service, you can feel free to drop your, your cash or your check, your tithe or your offering. For those who are still thinking about the online giving program, Let me just re-emphasize how great a way it is to get your donation, your tithe or your offering. Once you register your information for the first time, then every other time, let me tell you, it's just a breeze. It's very, very easy, very, very simple, very fast, accurate, and confidential. I remember one day I was stop just stopping at a, at a red light. And then guess what? I paid my tithe. <laughs> while I was in the car. Uh, it's very, very, very simple. It just says www.easytight.com. Triple W dot easytight, E A S Y T I T H E dot com. So please, please give it a try. We would, I would appreciate that greatly. I appreciate that greatly. So remember to pray for our friend, Reverend T. Dab. Uh, you know the passing, uh, the, 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 the departure for eternity of Sister Andrea Means Tida, the wife of uh, Pastor Tida. So please remember him uh, in prayer. Uh, the funeral service will be this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. in Fort Lauderdale. So uh, we're going to move on. We're going to continue with our service. And uh, we're going to ask uh, uh, Sister Madeleine, I don't know who's going to help her to do uh, the, the usual presentation of uh, the Father of the Year. Just before we move on with the intercessory prayer, before we do that, we will just sing Mon Dieu Mon Père after the presentation of uh, the new Father of the Year.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, everybody watching. Happy Father's Day to all of my heroes, role models. Thank you for everything you've done for our families. Um, you are so full of compassion, love, and strength. We need strong fathers like you. So I'd like today to present for the Father of the Year last year, Fue Moiso. Fue Moiso has done everything in his power to be the best father last year. I hope whoever's gonna step in to his shoe this year will be able to do that same and even more. So Fue Moiso, if you will come up, please. Father of the Year, I also would like to wish my husband a happy Father's Day. I know he's watching, and we all know what he's been through, and even through his sickness, he's been the best father, the best husband. So I'd like to wish him a happy um, Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, Maurice and Pierre. I love you. Right. And for our Father of the Year, um, we would like you guys to guess who the father is. There's many men here. It's one of them. Mm -hmm. I hear many great names. Oh, you guys are great fathers. Um, but this year, um, it's a great man. He has stepped up. He's been doing great in the church. He's um, he's a new member, but he's also stepped up. It's for which enjoy. I would love to give you a hug, but happy Father's Day. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. Uh, no way to express uh, my gratitude towards the church. Amen. Amen. RG, RG. Only one thing, I didn't think of that this morning. <laughs> but uh, my wife always said, you are his best father, not his best husband. <laughs> So we have a great father. He's a father to us every single day, all year, every day, 365 days a year. And that's our pastor, Pastor Moise. So we would like to present you a little token from, from the church. And thank you so much. And thank you for everyone for being here. Happy Father's Day. much in the name of all the fathers of the church we thank you church we thank you for thinking about us we don't take it lightly we feel very very honored thank you so very very much for thinking about us uh, those people every year who organize themselves to uh, do that special presentation we thank you for taking some of your precious time to do so and we will continue to pray for your ministry now, before we move on, we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to ask uh, for people to get ready. We're going to sing, Mon Dieu, Mon Père, uh, Écoutez-moi. It's at the back of your page. We're going to sing only three stars, three stanza, trois couplets de ce parti pour Mon Dieu, Mon Père.
Father God in heaven, here we are before you just to give you praise, to give you thanks for what you have done for us. God, we can say one more time, yes, you have renewed the contract again for giving us life, for waking us up. And we thank you, Lord, for making us your children. God, we thank you for giving us a unique identity as Christian. God, we want to submit ourselves to you. We want to give our lives to you. For you, the only one that deserves it. God, you're the one that created us at your image. And you want us to serve you in spirit and in truth. This morning, we're here just to simply worship you. God, we love you. We appreciate for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. And today, we no longer are sinners. We no longer are lost. We no longer the enemy's property. Now we are yours. God, we come to you to honor you, to raise your name up because you deserve it. God, we thank you for life that you have given us in abundance. God, thank you for the assurance that you have given us in spite of what we heard, in, in spite of what is going on. We truly believe that you hold us in your right hand. For you claim that those who trust in you, yes, in due time, you will lift them up. And those who trust in you in time of trial and tribulation, you will not forsake them. God, we thank you for this congregation this morning. You know us by name. You know us by needs. You know us by concern. God, I pray that you will come in the midst of us. Touch us individually. God, there are some that needs a touch from you. There are some that needs a word from you. There are some this morning, Lord, they simply need for you to look upon them. God, I know what you do with, things will not be the same. For that's the God who can change the circumstances. That's the God who can heal. That's the God who can bring solution. And that's the God that we're calling this morning. Father God, I want to pray for our hearts. God, we know that we have done things that probably outside of your will. God, I pray that you will forgive us. So you say, if your children that comes to you, kneel themselves before you and ask you for forgiveness, yes, you are a good God that can forgive us. God, anything that we have done outside of your will, I pray that you will forgive us and give us a new way, give us a new strategy to serve you. For we know that the enemy is attacking right now. But we know those who want to serve you, yes, Lord, in time of trouble, they will lift their eyes and to call upon your name. And we know that you're there to save them. Jesus, we pray for those that are, that are home right now, that are watching us via Facebook, later on, YouTube. There are some that are listening. God, we know that you have no limit. That's the God that can do above and beyond. That the God that can go far, deepest part. God, I pray that you will reach out to them. You know the needs and concern as well. I know there are some that would like to be here with us. Unfortunately, they are unable to. But I know God, you everywhere. That's the God that is omnipresent. And that's the God that is omnipotent. That can provide for all the needs according to your will. Jesus, we pray for this beautiful day. A day that we set apart. To, uh, to honor the fathers. God, we know we, first of all, have a father in heaven. God, we know that you are our real dad. You are our real father. That's a father even when we do wrong. That always have a heart of compassion to forgive us this morning. We want to lift before you every single Christian dad that are setting themselves apart to serve you. God, let them know that you love them. Let them know that they have a role model. And that God will never fail us. That the God that says that he will be there when we will need it the most. God, we pray for each and every father that are here. God, do not let them carry the name just for the sake of it. But let them do the work that comes with it. Let them also stand in the gap whenever he needs to. Let them be there just to protect and to instruct. Jesus, 
Lord, I pray for this day. May it be a day of blessing. May it be a day of gratitude for many. May it be a day of healing. Jesus, we leave you this service. Please accept it as a perfume. God, I pray that you will return to us blessing in abundance. May your name be lifted up. May your name be glorified. God, we know we don't forget this country that we're living in. God, I pray that you take full control of it. God, I pray that you bring a word. God, I pray that you bring a solution to the problem that are going on in justice. You know it, God. I pray that you give us a heart that pleases you. God, I pray that you will contribute to the well-being of each and every habitant in this place. We don't want to forget our native land, Haiti. God, I pray that you will say your word. God, I pray that you will stand. God, the same way that you stood for Israel one day, I know that you will one day stand up for our country. And say, enough is enough. You will give him peace. You will give him deliverance. For we know when you do it, no one can be against you. You have prayed for us. Prayed for us to prosper. Prayed for us to stand one day. Lord, we trust you and we love you. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Again, congratulations to Brother Jones. Uh, no father of the year. So please remember those of you who are part of uh, the administrative council, our second and uh, second reopening meeting is this evening through the telephone line, as you know. It's going to be at 7.30, just a reminder. Thank you so very much. Zoom. So we're going to find God's words today in the book of uh, 2 Kings, do watch chapter 12, verse 7 and 11. I feel like today I should talk more, speak more Creole than English. I'm going to try my best. I just don't want to lose my English speaking listeners and uh, worshipers. Try my best. But this is what the Lord puts in my heart. I should uh, give them a break. Those who prefer to hear the sermon in uh, Creole, I'll try my best. I'm losing sound. I'm losing sound big time. I don't know what happened. All right. So very good. 2 Kings chapter 20 verse uh, 1 to 11. Do wash up it for event. My first mistake is I brought an uh, English uh, Bible with me. So let's see what I got here. Oh, good. I have uh, another little French Bible. So let's see if I can set my hands. Those are so small, this Bible. That's what happened when you're getting old. Before, no matter how small they are, they never used to bother me at all. But now the smaller they get, the more challenging it is. 2 Kings uh, chapter 20. Do you watch up people event? Those of you who have uh, your English Bible, please follow in your English Bible. I'm going to read this in French. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to verse 11. En ce temps-là, Ézéchias fut malade à la mort. Le prophète Esaïe, fils d'Amox, vint auprès de lui et lui dit, « Ainsi parle l'Éternel, donne tes ordres à ta maison, car tu vas mourir et tu ne vivras plus. » Ézéchias tourna son visage contre le mur et fit cette prière à l'Éternel, Ô oh, Éternel, souviens-toi que j'ai marché devant ta face avec fidélité et intégrité de cœur, et que j'ai fait ce qui est bon, ce qui est bien à tes yeux. Et Ézéchias répondit d'abondantes larmes. Esaïe qui était sorti n'était pas encore dans la cour du milieu, parce que la parole de l'Éternel lui fut adressée en ces termes. Retourne et dis à Ézéchias, chef de mon peuple, ainsi parle l'Éternel, le Dieu de David, à ton père. J'ai entendu ta prière, j'ai vu tes larmes. Voici, je te guérirai le troisième jour. Tu, tu monteras à la maison de l'Éternel. J'ajouterai à tes jours quinze années. Je te délivrerai. Toi et cette ville de la main du roi d'Assyrie, je protégerai cette ville à cause de moi et à cause 
de David, mon serviteur. Esaïe dit, prenez une masse de figues. On a pris et l'on appliqua sur l'ulcère. Et Ézéchias guérit. Ézéchias avait dit à Esaïe, il a prononcé, l'ombre avancera-t-elle de 10 degrés ou reculera-t-elle de 10 degrés Ézéchias répondit, c'est peu de choses que l'ombre avance de 10 degrés, mais plutôt qu'elle recule de 10 degrés. Alors Isaïe le prophète invoqua l'Éternel qui fit reculer l'ombre de 10 degrés sur les degrés d'Akaz, où elle était descendue. Parole euh, du Seigneur. Le sujet de mon message aujourd'hui, c'est celui-ci. Mets de l'ordre dans ta maison. Put your house in order. That's what the English version says. Put your house in order. Pendant le fil des années, chers frères et sœurs dans le Seigneur, euh, la vie de Zéchias, la vie de Zéchias est quelque chose qui a suscité beaucoup d'intérêt de ma part. Zéchias' life has caused me over the years some deep thinking about God. When you think you understand God very well, then you come to a story, you come to an experience, and you discover that there's still more about God to be learned. Donc, je pense que vous comprenez bon Dieu tout à fait. Et c'est là qu'on va réaliser. Pendant qu'on va lire une histoire, pendant qu'on va attendre une expérience, et puis on va réaliser qu'on va pire en pire bagaille dans le bon Dieu qu'on propose à nous connaître. My beloved, To Chronicles chapter 1, 20 and 21 gives us a good background to this man, to King Ezekiah. To Chronicles 31, 20 and 21, and thus Ezekiah did throughout all Judah. And he did what was good. He did what was good, right and true before God. He did with all his heart and prospered. Ezekiah did throughout all Judah. And he did what was good, what was right, and true before God. And he did what he did all of that with all his heart and prospered. My friend, Ezekiah was 25 years old. 25 years old when he became king of Judah. He was the 13th king of Judah. Just a little background. As one, at one point of time, Israel underwent a big division, a schism. Ten of the, tri of the twelve tribes have followed Jeroboam, while the other two followed Rehoboam. But Israel as a nation turned from God and polluted their land with idol worship. Bien que pays a été divisé, il y a dix tribus qui suivent Jéroboam et il y a deux là-dedans qui suivent Jéroboam. Mais Israël, comme nation, tourna contre Dieu et pollua leur pays avec de l'idolâtrie, de fausse adoration. It was during that time of great shame, of mock idolatry, that Ahaz, Ezekiah's predecessor, made a lot of high places. Le père de Ézéchias, il est déjà des holieux un peu partout et brûla de l'encens en l'honneur des faux dieux, ce qui suscita de la colère de l'Éternel. Ahaz, he made a lot of high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoke the anger of the Lord God. During that time, Israel neglected totally the house of God. Can you imagine that? Israel, the people of God, the nation of Israel, neglected the house of God. Many of the temple vessels used in worship had been given as gift, as gift to the king of Syria. The temple had been defiled, and Ahaz had the doors nailed shut. Akaz était carrément les fermes portes grand temple à Jérusalem. Point d'adoration, period. 
Then, upon her heart's death, ensuite à la, à la mort de la case, Ezekias devint roi. Ezekiah became king. The Bible tells us that Ezekiah was grieved at what he witnessed uh, and was determined to do something about it. He was determined to change things. He called the priest and the Levites and organized to do a total cleansing of the temple. To Chronicle 29, verse 3 to 5 tells us, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought him to, in the priest and the Levites and gathered them in the square on the east. Then he said to them, listen to me, O Levites, Consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry the uncleanness out of the holy place. Then we come to 2 Kings 18, 5 and 6. And he trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that after him, listen to that, after him, there was none like him among all the kings of Judah and among those who were before him. For he clung to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but he kept his commandments, which the Lord had commissioned Moses. And the Lord was with him. La parole de Dieu nous dit, l'éternel était avec lui. Et partout où il alla, il prospéra. Wherever he went, the Lord prospered him. I don't know for you, my beloved, but that sounds like a very good report to me. It looks like Ezekiah would fit the definition of a new perfect, perfect servant of God. Semble évident que mes deux le Seigneur soient cherchés en homme qui qui sont vrais serviteurs de l'Éternel. Sous par contre Ezekiah, par contre qui est sous par Those verses we read speak about Ezekiah's faith. They will lead to Ezekiah more character, a man of conviction, a man who trusted God. Yet somehow, if you fast forward, you will come to that particular point of Ezekiah's life. L'enfant qui a avancé un petit peu plus loin, on va parvenir à ce carrefour d'histoire de la vie d'Ezekiah. Quand Esaïe le prophète eut à lui dire à Ezekiah, Ezekiah met de l'ordre dans ta maison. Ezekiah said, put your house in order. In the exact words, in those, day, in those days, Ezekiah became sick to death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said to him, point blank, thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you are going to die. And he added, you will not live. You will not live. Serious words. Set your house in order. What did, what does what can those words probably mean? The Bible doesn't tell us nothing much about those words and their meaning when it comes to Ezekiah's life. Could it be that some priorities needed to be addressed, needed to be reset? I don't know. Could it be that some areas of Ezekiah's life, he, he, he was probably negligent? Could it be that it was about Ezekiah's finances? Being the king of Israel, I don't have no doubt that he had a lot of money. But what I, what I realize, a lot of money doesn't mean, doesn't mean that, you know, things are in order financially for you. The last one, the question of finances, is a huge issue nowadays. I met, according to the course of my past story, several situations where those words would serve very well the persons involved. Not long ago, I met a widow who shared with me after his husband died, unexpectedly, she shared with me that the husband left behind a debt of $50,000 that she afterwards needed to pay back. To make this story worse, she told me when the husband contracted this debt, she was not even aware of it. It had to do with some a property a refinancing transaction. The husband falsified a signature and got himself $50,000 cash money without the wife knowing it. His husband, my friend, 
could have used a little bit of that lesson. This husband could do very well to hear, set your house in order, my friend. Set your house in order can probably mean a broad range of different things, my beloved. It might even be in the spiritual sense of the term. We don't know. I don't know why I felt as though the Lord is speaking to someone out there. Let me tell you this before we go further in the story of Ezekiah. You do not have to wait until God pronounces a decree of death upon you to start thinking about setting your house in order, my friend. Again, set your house in order can mean different things to different people. It's up to everyone of you who are worshiping with us here in this, uh, in this hall and, uh, and everywhere out there. It's up to you. It's up to you to find out what it really means. Goes by the way, just a parenthesis. Let's move on. Number two, let's look at the desperation of King Ezekiah. This, my beloved, is a perfect example of why someone could easily fall in total desperation and just give up. Imagine for a moment a person who walked totally, totally in the feet of the Lord. Imagine a moon who has marched in the front of the eternal perpetuum. A moon who has a character moral without reproach. Who marched right before the Lord. A moon of conviction who placed all confidence in the Lord. Who made great reforms in the temple and in the spiritual life of the spiritual people of Israel. And now, this is the truth. And now, like they say, this, this, some Christians, even among the best, would raise some questions. Some things like, oh, me? Things like, what will my enemies think? Remember, uh, Ezekiah had a big victory against the, the Assyrian people. What, what, what are they going to say? Things like, was it worthwhile to do all of that? After I did all of this, look at what happened. Just 39 years old. I'm gonna die. By the way, I've heard several life stories, even before the pandemic, of godly people who came down with a totally, totally devastating diagnostic. Talking about even Christian people. In fact, I remember one of my friends I visited who had cancer. And one Sunday, as I visited him in his house, he told me this, I will never forget that. Uncle Claude, you know something? Trust me, I know who I am. I said, what do you mean you know who you are? And he said, trust me, I know that I'm a dead person in vacation. I never forget those words. I know that I'm a dead person in vacation. But in the case of Hezekiah, something else came up in his mind. Dans le cas d'Ézéchias, mes bien-aimés, qui ont l'autre bagaille qui remontait dans l'esprit, Monsieur Sa, he decided to go north instead of going south, meaning that he decided to lift up his eyes towards the mountains. He decided to take the matter to God in intense supplications. The Bible tells us Ezekiah shed tears before God. The Bible tells us he wept and wept. Ezekiel versait des larmes et des larmes. Abliem dit nous encore, c'est seulement 39 ans d'âge. Il y aurait les affleurs de l'âge. Et lui-même qui était conduit Judas à la victoire contre la Syrie. Perhaps some of you right now are facing a situation where as you feel as though your sense of security has been compromised. It's like someone pulling the rug from under your feet. The Holy Spirit is telling you today, do not despair, my friend. Take the matter to God in prayer. Take the matter to God in earnest prayer, humbly and sincerely. Who knows what God has in store for you? That brings me to my third point. Now come the best part of the story, the deliverance of King Ezekiah. Nous sommes parvenus maintenant à la meilleure partie de l'histoire, la délivrance du roi Ezekiel. God said, I have heard your prayer. Wow. God said, I have heard your prayer, son. I have seen your tears. Surely I will 
kill you. The Bible is not so very clear about what illness exactly Ezekiah had. Yes, it says about a sore, a wound, a ball, an abscess, an ulcer, but what caused that wound? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Remember, Ezekiah was a good man. He had been a good king. Ezekiel still, ton bon monsieur, un monde qui vraiment a marché droit dans la ville. C'était un bon roi. However, he got sick. Not only he got sick, but he was near death. There is so much to be learned about this last word. Ezekiah was a good man, a man of God who feared God, a man of good moral character, yet. He got sick, very sick, to the point of death. Just like you probably did, I have heard many cases of good people, some good teachers, some good nurses, some good doctors, some good police officers, some great coaches who fell under COVID-19. When I mean fell, who passed out, who died from COVID-19. This is another topic. Hopefully one day I will get to that. There's a question I hear out there. Come back and map the door. What tick 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 lock? Mon ami, on sait que ma prière font prier pour mais avant de commencer prier pour vous, confessez pécho, confessez pécho, confessez pécho, confessez pécho. You probably have heard that. One of them had the gut to call me and tell me that exact word. You know what I told him to tell that sister? I said, Who are you? Who are you to tell me what you are telling me? You mean to tell me? I know you, you've been a member of my church. You mean to tell me? You are without sin, that's why you're healthy? That's what you want to tell me? You give me order before you're gonna pray for me? Or my wife, you want me to confess? Be careful. Be careful what you hear. Those are fake gospel, my friend. Very fake gospel. Get these people out of your face and do this, do this quick. This quick. It's another topic. I will get back to that. After a few days of week, all weeks into the illness, the prophet Isaiah instructed Ezekiah to take a, 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 a cake of figs. And I tell you, it's a fig france. It's not fig fig mu, but it's a little bit like this. 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 Amen. There's nothing wrong, nothing wrong about going to the doctor when you are sick, my friend. What we do have to remember, the healing, the healing is not really in the medicine or in the doctor, no matter how great the doctor is, but listen to this, the healing is of God. God spared the life of Ezekiah and recorded the word of God. Proverbs 25, 1 tells us, these are the Proverbs of Solomon. I know we are rushing for time, but I don't know what. I feel like reading that, 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 that passage. It's a kind of long one, but be, be, bear with me. It's Isaiah 38. Uh, that's probably, if I don't read it, my message will really miss a good part of it. Isaiah 38, please look with me. Isaiah, Isaiah 28, all right? Isaiah 38, verse 1. I'm not going to tell you on when, so you don't get discouraged, because I'm going to read a lot of verses. Isaiah 38, okay? Isaiah 38, okay? Isaiah, the book of the prophet Isaiah 38, okay? Let me read to you what I see. En ce temps-là, Ézéchias fut malade à la mort. Isaiah 38. En ce temps-là, Ézéchias fut malade à la mort. Le prophète Esaïe, fils d'Amox, vint auprès de lui et lui dit, ainsi parle l'Éternel, « Donne tes ordres à ta maison, mais de l'ordre de ta maison, car tu vas mourir et tu ne vivras plus. » Ézéchias tourna son visage contre le mur et fit cette prière à l'Éternel, 
Ô Éternel, souviens-toi que j'ai marché devant ta face avec fidélité et intégrité de cœur, et que je fais ce qui est bien à tes yeux. Et Ézéchias répondit d'abondantes larmes. Et la parole de l'Éternel fut adressée à Esaïe en ce mot. Va et dit à Ézéchias, ainsi parle l'Éternel, le Dieu de David, ton père. J'ai entendu ta prière, j'ai vu tes larmes. Voici, j'ajouterai à tes jours quinze années. Je te délivrerai, toi et cette ville, de la main du roi d'Assyrie. Et je protégerai cette ville. Et voici de la part de l'Éternel le signe auquel tu connaîtras que l'Éternel accomplira la parole qu'il a prononcée. Je ferai reculer de dix degrés en arrière avec le soleil, l'ombre de des degrés qui est descendu sur les degrés d'Akaz. Et le soleil recula de dix degrés sur les degrés où il était descendu. Antique des écrasses, roi de Judas, sur sa maladie et sur son rétablissement. Je disais, quand mes jours sont en repos, je dois m'en aller aux portes du séjour des morts. Je suis privé du reste de mes années. Je disais, je ne verrai plus l'éternel. Éternel sur la terre des vivants, je ne verrai plus aucun homme parmi les habitants du monde. Ma demeure est enlevée et transportée loin de moi. Comme une tente de berger, je sens le fil de ma vie coupé comme par un tisserand. Il me retrancherait de sa trame. Du jour à la nuit, tu m'auras achevé. Je ne me suis, je me suis contenu jusqu'au matin. Comme un lion, il brisait tous mes os. Du jour à la nuit, tu m'auras achevé. Je poussais des cris comme une hirondelle en voltigeant. Je gémissais comme la colombe. Mes yeux s'élevaient languissant envers le ciel. Ô éternel, je suis dans l'angoisse. Secours-moi. Que dirais-je? Il m'a répondu et il m'a exaucé. Je marcherai humblement. Marcherai humblement jusqu'au terme de mes années, après avoir été ainsi affligé. Seigneur, Seigneur, c'est par tes bontés qu'on jouit de la vie. C'est par elle que je respire encore. Tu me rétablis, tu me rends à la vie. Voici mes souffrances même sont devenues mon salut. Tu as pris, pour pla tu as pris plaisir à retirer mon âme de la force du néant. Ah, tu as jeté derrière toi tous mes péchés. Tu as jeté derrière toi tous mes péchés. Ce n'est pas le séjour des morts qui te loue. Ce n'est pas la mort qui te célèbre. Ceux qui sont descendus dans la fosse n'espèrent plus en ta fidélité. Le vivant, le vivant, ce celui loi qui te loue, comme moi aujourd'hui. Le Père fait connaître à ses enfants ta fidélité. Éternel m'a sauvé. Nous ferons résonner la corde de nos instruments tous les jours de notre vie dans la maison de l'Éternel. Isaïe avait dit qu'on apporte une masse de figues et qu'on les étonne sur le cerf. Ézéchias vivra. Et Ézéchias avait dit à quel signe connaîtrai-je que je monterai à la maison de l'Éternel. The death decree was already set, my beloved. God had already spoken. But you think I told you, Ezekiel has got it on the show we will. I know you are a good man. I know you serve me well. But I have other plan for you. I want you home, son. Just do one thing before you come. Just set your house in order because I already decided. But guess what? God showed grace to Ezekiel. God added 15 more years, 15 années à la vie d'Ezekias. Ça c'est la grâce, mes bien-aimés dans le Seigneur. Amen. I know many of you are worshiping with us today here, or maybe out there to Facebook or YouTube later. I know many of you have had those kind of experience in your life. Many of you remember When the doctor said to you, sir, or mom, ma'am, you have only 10% chance to survive this. And now it has been five for some, 10, 15, 20, since doctor pronounced your death sentence. 
And let me tell you something very funny. Most of you, that doctor who told you, you have probably 10% chance to make it, probably already died a long time ago. Amen. That, my beloved, is the result of God's grace, pure and simple. In fact, each day, I should add each hour, each minute should be looked at the result of God's grace to us. Because we should, we should not assume that we have tomorrow in our hands. We, we don't even have this afternoon in our hands, if you understand. Every single day is the result of God's grace. Of God's grace. We could talk about God's power. There's not much time. God's providence. Look at how God turned the sundial backward. Things that is not normally done. C'est comme si d'abord le soleil n'a pas avancé pour jouer à, pour jouer à, à le coucher. On a sous la vie Ézéchias. Et puis c'est comme ça que bon Dieu dit, bon, je vais faire le soleil là, retourner le bac en arrière. Sous la vie Ézéchias. Only God can do that. I remember when I was a child, I was hit with typho malaria in Haiti. I was then seven years old. I shared that experience with the church maybe a couple of times. During those days, there was not too much medication, not too many things offered in Haiti. I used to be at Immaculate Conception Hospital, seeing some, some of my friends, some of the people were lying next to me. I used to see them coming with the bag to pick them up and to, to go home with them, to be buried. I was seven years old. Now, in just a few months, I will be 67 years old. The grace of God, my friend, the providence of God, no matter what happened to you, it fits perfectly in the master plan of the Almighty God. Yes, I repeat that, no matter what happens to you, my friend, nothing can happen to your life without his permission, and nothing can take your life until you have fulfilled the purpose and the plan God has for you. Amen. This great man of God, George Whitfield, said this, and I agree with it. Let me quote that. I am immortal until my work is done. Amen. 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 George Whitfield. Depuis travail moi sous terre pas qu'on fini, moi son monde qui immortel, ça veut dire pas qu'à mourir tout autant plein projet que bon Dieu gain pour m'accomplir sur terre pour lui, lui pas arriver. Yes. I believe it. Let me suggest to you the book of Two Kings is a good way. Please when you have some spare time read it. You will discover several life lessons. Life I we as we know it it's not trouble free, my friend. It's not that trouble free. That's one thing I have learned from reading the book of Kings. But Jesus gave us the right perspective about life's trouble when he said, you will have trouble in this life. Vous aurez des tribulations dans le monde. Mais prenez courage, dit le Seigneur Jésus Christ, car moi j'ai vaincu le monde. I have overcome the world. What is it that represents a huge challenge to you, to your life this morning, my friend? You fathers out there, qui est ça? Qui est qui ça? Qui représente un gros challenge, qui fait sentir que c'est comme si d'adou la vous gâcher, c'est comme si d'adou tout rien vous te gagner, c'est comme si d'adou yo yo évaporer devant. Qui ça qui est lié, mon frère? Follow the example of Ezekiah this morning. Take your situation. Take your problem to the Lord. We will have pity over you. Prends un problème ou moi, quel que soit ça lié. Peut-être son petit, peut-être son petit monde qui disparaît de, de visage ou. Que vous attendez depuis des mois, des semaines, des années. Prends ça. Allez devant mon Dieu dans la prière ensemble avec lui. Lui-même qui est capable de faire pitié pour vous-même. Priez mon frère. Si Seigneur t'a aimé pour me dire, ou plaignez toi. Stop complaining, but pray instead, my beloved. God is still in the deliverance business. He still does miracles. He still makes ways where there seem to be no ways. Trust him, my friend. Just trust him. My hope is that someone, someone will heed these words in his heart 
and that someone finds a help that he or she is seeking. Remember, the power is in God. Christos n'a pas nommé personne. Pas de magie là-dedans. Pas de faire secret. Pas de monde qui a vu de l'eau. Pas 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 si c'est pas bon Dieu, t'es qu'on te fait grâce, peut-être moi même ouais, je vous dis, on va pas jamais le connaître. C'est bon, c'est bon, not just one circumstance in my life. C'est pas grâce, mon Dieu. Peut-être moi connaître, moi je vous dis. Bon Dieu, bon Dieu qui fait grâce. I hope that this message was some kind of encouragement to someone here in this room or out there, wherever you might be. May the good Lord. Sustain you, my friend. May God keep you. May God guide you always. Donc, que nous avons préparé pour nous terminer, mes bien-aimés dans le Seigneur. Encore une joie et un privilège que nous avons retrouvé nous dans l'adoration du vrai Dieu, du Dieu Tout-Puissant, du vrai Dieu, le Dieu qui est réel, qui parfait, le Dieu incomparable. Ça nous a fait la journée. Nous souhaitons que le service a été capable vraiment de une bénédiction pour nous, chacun de nous. Pendant nous allons inviter au tourner feuille à que nous allons mettre ensemble. Nous allons chanter ensemble. Le numéro 194, Jésus te confie une œuvre de l'amour utile et béni jusqu'à son retour.
une joie et un privilège que nous sommes capables ensemble en cette enceinte pour célébrer notre Dieu, pour célébrer sa fidélité, pour lui rendre gloire, honneur, pour lui même seul de mérité. Comment nous offrons hors à celui qui peut faire, par la puissance qui agit dans nous, infiniment au-delà de ce que nous demandons ou pensons. À lui seul, ça, il soit gloire, honneur, majesté, fidélité, dès à présent, au siècle des siècles. Amen. Soyez bénis, mes bien-aimés. Be blessed. Have a good afternoon. See you again next week for a similar worship service. Thank you so much.